In this lesson, I am going to show you guys how to draw a straight line using a pretty cool method that I've noticed a lot of learners find quite easy compared to X, like using the x-intercept, y-intercept method. I like this method quite a lot, so let me show you how it works. So let's say we have a straight line equation, and that straight line equation is y equals to 2 over 3 x minus 4. So the way that you can draw this line really easily is the following. So what you need to make sure, step one, is that the y value must always be by itself. Okay, so that'll be step one. Let me write that over here. Uh, get the y alone, because in some equations that I'm going to show you a little bit later, by the way, we're going to do quite a few examples in this video. Uh, some of them, the y value isn't going to be alone. So that's step one. We must get the y alone. Once you have the y alone, then it's pretty easy. You take this number that does not have the x, so it's the y-intercept value, um, which is minus 4. So you go onto the y-axis and you put a little dot at minus 4. Then what you do is you look at the gradient. Now remember the gradient is always the, or the slope, it's always the one in the front of the x. Okay, so that's your slope, or you might like to call it your gradient. Then what you need to do is you need to look at the top number. That's going to be your y, or you can think of that as your um, your height, or you could think of that as your rise. Okay, that, that'll make sense just now. You'll see. And then this number at the bottom, that's your x, or it is your length, or you could think of it as your run. So Kevin, what are you actually talking about? Let me explain. So the two is a positive two, so we're gonna go, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go two places up from this place over here. So we're gonna go up by two, one, two. Then we're gonna go three places to the right. There will be times where we're gonna go left and down, but I'll explain that just now. So now we're gonna go to the right, one, two, three, and we're gonna put a little dot over there. Then we are simply gonna connect a line going through those two points. So we just do that. And that, and that's it. That is how you can do. That is how you can draw a straight line um, using this method. So now we're going to practice a whole bunch of these. But what I first want to do is talk to you guys a little bit about gradient. So let's say that, or, or another word is slope, right? So slope or gradient. So let's say the slope is. Um, let me first talk about positive and negative. So if your slope is positive or if your slope is negative. It's gonna have two different shapes. So when your slope is positive, it the lines look like this. Okay, so they go, so let me, let me, let's pretend I had an X and a Y axis. So you can see the lines are all going upwards from left to right. If we then, let's just put a dotted line here. This is just to show I'm comparing the positive gradients and then over here I'm comparing the negative gradients. Okay, so if you have a negative gradient, then your slope would look like this. So something like that. So what you should be able to see is that it goes down from left to right. So if your gradient is positive, then the line goes up from left to right. From left to right. If your gradient is negative, then the line goes down from left to right. So for example, if I have a gradient that is negative three, then it must go down, so it would be something like that. If I have a gradient that is positive four, then it would go up because it's a positive gradient. Okay, so that's the first main thing that I wanted to speak to you guys about gradient. The next thing is how to interpret the top number and the bottom number. Okay, so what we said once again, or earlier was that this part here is always going to be your height. Um, some people call it the rise, or they think of it as the y values. Whereas this number at the bottom is always going to be the length, so it's like the horizontal. So let's also say that this could also be thought of as vertical. This is called the run, and it's the x values, or you can think of it as horizontal. So this number at the bottom takes us in that direction. This number at the top. Uh, is for the vertical. So if I say that the line is 7 over 3, then what that means is 
7 up and 3 right. If I say 5, now this confuses learners. They're like, okay, I only see one number. So which one's the height and which one's the run? Um, which one's the height and which one's the length? What you do is you pretend that it's 5 over 1 because 5 is the same as 5 over 1. So then that would mean 5 up, 5 up, and 1 right. Uh, see, it looks like we're always going to say to the right. I did say earlier that there's sometimes a left, but that's not actually true. I'll show you something that's interesting now. So let's say the gradient is negative 3 over 2. Ah, now you've got to think negative. So what that means is that we're going to go 3 down and then 2 to the right. So the bottom number, we're always just going to push it over to the right. But if it's negative, then we go down. And if it's a positive number at the top, um, then we go up. But Kevin, what if the what if they write the gradient as negative three over two? Then where is the negative? Is it like what if what if they put the negative right in the front? Does that mean the three is negative or the two is negative? So what you do in a situation like that is you just pretend that it's for the the three. Okay. So then what you'll do is you would go. Um, so for this one, because it's negative, you would go three down and then two to the right, okay? Um, or if you wanted to, um, I just gave this some thought now and I forgot to mention this, that let's say that, let's say it is three over, uh, let's say it is three over two and they put a negative. You can choose if you want that negative to be for the top number or if you want that top, the negative to be for the bottom number. Don't choose a negative for both though, okay? So it's one negative, so you can choose if you want it to be for the top number or the bottom number. Now you might be like, yeah, but Kevin, that's gonna change everything, won't it? But it actually won't, let me show you. So let's say I have an equation that goes like this. And we wanna draw that. So what we do is we put our x and our y axis, and then at positive four, because that's the y-intercept, we would go up and put a little dot. That would be at positive four. Now, let's say, let's say method number one, and let's actually put this over here. Let's say, so method number one, um, we can think of it as a negative three at the top and a two at the bottom. So what that then means is three down, because that's, a negative three for the y values, and then two to the right. Okay, so we can say three down, or let's first go put our positive four, which is there. Then we're gonna go three places down, one, two, three, and then we're gonna go two to the right, one, two. We're gonna put our little dot over there. If I then connect a line through them, whoopsie, Kevin. Whoa. Something like that, okay? Now, method number two, you could also think of the number as three over negative two, okay? So then what would happen is you're gonna put the y-intercept at positive four. So there it is. But now you're gonna go three up because that three is a positive number. So you're gonna go three up, so it's one, two, three. But then you're gonna go two to the left because the two is a negative and the number at the bottom is always the horizontal. So then you're gonna go two to the left, so one, two. So now some of you are like, yeah, but given you see, now you can see that the dots are in the different place. I hear you, but as soon as I connect them, whoops, it'll give me the exact same shape of line as the previous one. Yes, I'm putting the dot in a different place, but the the line that it creates is exactly the same. So now we're gonna do some examples. So remember what we said, we said that step one, you wanna get the y value by itself. So you're gonna say um, y equals to two x plus four. Can you see what I did? I just took this negative two x over to the other side uh, where it became a positive. So now that we've got that, we can go put the four over there, and now you might be wondering, so what is the gradient? Like what is the, what is the rise or what is the height? What is the y value? And what is the run or the x value? Remember, you can just write this as two over one. So if you have two over one as your gradient, then that means two up, one right. So we're gonna go two up, one, two, I've ran out of space there, but that should be at six. And then we're gonna go one to the right, so that's there. Put a little dot and then you simply connect them. 
here's the next one. So step one, get the y value by itself. Uh, Kevin, it is by itself. Look, no, the y value must be completely by itself. So we're going to divide everything by three. So that's going to give us y equals to two over three x minus two. Whoops, and we have to divide that by three, don't we? Minus two over three. So I divided everything by three. So that's what we get. So this is our beginning part. That is our y-intercept. So that's negative 2 over 3, which is like negative 0, 0,67. So it's somewhere over there. Okay, so we put a little dot. Now this one is going to be a bit weird, but now what we do is we look at the slope, which is 2 over 3. And so we need to know that that means 2 up because it's a positive number and 3 right because it's a positive number. So we're going to go 2 up from here. So that's going to take us to about there and then about there. And then we're going to go two place, sorry, three places to the right. So we're going to go one, two, three. So we would be somewhere there, okay? And then you would simply connect a line through those two points. Here's our last example for this video. So step one, always get the y by itself. So how would we do that? Well, we're going to have to divide everything by negative two, okay? And so that's going to give us a positive y because those are going to cancel out. And then 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Okay, uh, You could leave it as 4 over negative 2 if you wanted to. That doesn't really matter. And then this part over here is going to be negative 1. So negative 1, because 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. Now that we've got the y by itself, that's a good thing. So now we can go take this minus 1 and put that as the y-intercept. There we go. Now negative 2, remember if there's nothing at the bottom, just put a little 1 like that. And so what that then means, now remember you can handle this negative however you want. You could handle it as negative 2 over 1, which would then be 2 down because the 2 is negative, and then 1 to the right. Or you could handle it as 2 up and 1 to the left because then the 2 is positive but then the one's negative. It will give you the exact same looking line at the end. So you can decide whatever you feel like doing there. What you mustn't do is put a negative for both of them. That's not correct. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this one. So I'm gonna go two down, so one, two, and then one to the right, boom. And so you should end up with a point over there. And then what you do is you just connect them. Whoa, why do I keep going so skew? Connect them like that. Obviously, you'd use like a ruler or a straight edge or something like that. Um, but there we have it.